Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys and I'm glad to be here and share with you another word from the Bible and the Word of God. I want to share with you a word from uh, the Bible, that 10 minute message that I pray will bless your heart and may be a means of helping you to find something you need to find in your life today. I'm speaking to you right here from my home in my apartment and I'm speaking to you believing God's going to bless the Word to your heart. Amen. I speak it on to the fact that you are a leader. You are a leader. You have influence. A leader exerts influence in other people's lives. You exert some influence in some lives out there. Sometimes there are those that you do not realize that you're influencing. But you're going to influence people. And that's important. The Bible teaches us that we need we need the right kind of leadership. We need the right kind of leadership. We need the leadership that is right and that is good for our country. And we need leadership of people that believe the Bible and believe in God. And we need that in America. We need it in all our countries. But we sadly need it in America where we know that our forefathers founded this nation upon the Constitution which was built on the Bible the Word of God. And when we turn from the Bible, we turn away from God. And we're in danger of doing that right now. And we need the right kind of leadership. People that believe in God. Judges that believe in God. People in politics that believe in God and believe in the Bible. And I pray this for all countries of the world. I'm speaking to you from the book of Joshua. God called Moses and before Moses left, he, he told him he would send uh, Joshua into the uh, country, into the promised land across the Jordan River. And so the word of God came to Moses and Moses spoke to Joshua saying that he had been chosen of God to go and to claim the right of God's promises to go into the promised land. This is in the first chapter of Joshua. And in verse 6, six he said, uh, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people I will send you, and you will bring forth the people into a land that I swear to give them to their fathers. So here are some principles of leadership. Number one, we find that leadership, the principle of leadership is the fact that God has called, and God will lead. God will lead you. God has called you, and He will lead you. Now, I'm, not, I'm talking to someone right now that is a potential leader. Maybe you're a leader in your home. Maybe you're a leader in the work on the workforce out there. Maybe you're a leader in your schoolwork. Wherever it is, you are a leader. That is, you have influence in the life of other people. And so you must recognize that all good influence comes from God. And the closer you get to God, the more good influence you're going to have on others. Over in the book of Proverbs, in the third chapter, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your ways, and He will direct your path. And you will be able to help others find the way and know the truth and walk the way and will of God. And that's so important that when you do that. So here are some principles laid down to Joshua. One is that, that leadership is of God. And the next one we need to recognize that the leadership that God gives us comes from, from the Lord and it is from the Word of God. The Word of God is so important in finding God's way and God's truth. We need to go by the Word of God. Over in the Bible in the Psalms, in verse uh, 105, uh, uh, 119 and 105, it says this, the, the word, Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my way. Your Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my way. A lamp is for darkness. Light is during the day. So here it is that the Word of God is like a lamp at night. It gives us time, the way to go when we can't see the way, when we're facing darkness. I may be talking to someone right now and you're in darkness. You don't know what to do. You have a decision to make and you don't know how to make it. But let me say to you, you need to go to the Bible and read the Word and find the Word there in due season. The Bible says it's a light into your path and a way and your way. So it's a light by day to give you like the sun by day. It gives you light to walk in. 
So we need to read the Word day and night. We need also to recognize that it's good for us when we're walking in the light when everything is going good, and we'll walk in the dark when everything is going bad. But whatever it is in your position today, I want you to know that the Lord is there to help you. And so the Lord's Word teaches that leadership is a place where uh, one of the principles is God's called you to it. The other principle is His Word. Try to go by the Word. Read the Word. Read the Word. Holy Bible, book divine, precious treasure, thou art mine. Mine to tell me where it's I came. Mine to tell me where I'm going. Holy Bible, book divine, precious treasure, thou art mine. And so read your word. Read the Bible. And as we read the Bible, we understand something else, that uh, leadership comes from people that are seeking the will of God in what they do and in, uh, and, and in finding that the presence of the Lord is with them. He said, wherever you go, I'll go with you. Over there in the book of, of uh, Joshua, we read there in that ninth verse of Scripture I want you to, to read to read for you, and I want you to memorize it. It's such a good one. Joshua 1 and 9, here's what it says. Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Now that's a good word for you. Try to memorize that word, dear friend. Try to memorize it because God loves you and I love you and the Holy Spirit is in you. Try to memorize that word. And you're living in a dark world. You're living among people that do not originally believe the Bible. And generally speaking, you won't find many that are quoting scriptures to you, but they'll talk about everything else. And we need to recognize that we need the word. And so God is with you. God is with you. Oh, have not I commanded you, he said, be strong. Be strong and have good courage. For the Lord's with you. We need to be strong. One of the qualities, principles of leadership is be strong in the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. And when we're strong in the Lord, we're strong. Our strength is really in Him. Be strong and have good courage. Do not be afraid. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that's a good word for you this day. I want you to remember it and believe it and love it and let it be a part of your life. I want you to know that another part of the scripture is found over in 1 Peter. We read these words in 1 Peter in the second chapter and that is that Jesus has set for us an example of leadership. He taught us how to lead. He taught us how to lead by trusting God and by loving God and loving others. The Bible says over in 1 Peter, the first uh, the second chapter of First Peter, in verse 21, it says, For even this unto this was Christ uh, before set for us an example, that we should follow his steps. Jesus is our example. He showed us how to lead others by loving others, by loving the unlovely, by loving those that seem to have no avenue of really expertise and nothing that would, help, would show that there would be any conforming to, to success in their lives. He chose the needy and the hurting and the sad, and he brought out of them a good lives and lives that counted for God. Good leaders will find potential in those that are seemingly weak. And so we see it's important. When he was reviled, he reviled not again, but he trusted him who committed unto God the Father in his righteousness. And so when Jesus was criticized and all condemned, he did not fight back, but he committed himself to God the Father who judges righteously. And that's a good way for you to live. You I'm speaking to as a leader. I may be talking to a preacher. I may be talking to a president of a company. I may be talking to someone in the home that's leading, someone in their hour of, of need. Maybe you're a foreman on the job. You don't have to be. You can be a leader and be the least among his people because you have an influence for good. You have an influence for good. Somebody said, when you come into a room, you can tell your influence is, is good if they're happy to see you come in. But your influence is bad if they are happy to, when you go out. <laughs> so it's important. It's important that your influence count for God. You're not trying to impress people. You're trying to impress the Lord. And God will take care of it. He'll take care of the people. And so we see that we do this. 
Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness. And by his stripes you were healed. I like that word, by his stripes you were healed. Not going to be healed, but you were healed. I believe it means that when he died on that tree and that cross at Calvary, not only did he die for your sins, that was the principal part of his death, to die for your sins. But also there was a bonus, and that bonus was that he, by his stripes and by his blood, you were healed. And so I think that there's healing for you. You just need to claim it. You need to claim it. A person can have a million dollars in the bank, but if he never writes a check, he never does realize the beauty of it, the good of it. Oh, praise the Lord. You were healed, so claim that healing and pray for God's healing in the name of Jesus Christ and by his stripes. For now you have returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Jesus is a shepherd and the bishop of your soul. God loves you very much. He loves you so much. I want you to know that he loves you and he's called you to walk with him and to bear with him. You have an influence. You have a great influence and that influence is important. Let me close with this illustration. Some years ago in Portland, Oregon, the uh, manager of a store talked to the, to the owner of the store and said, I want to know what's going on in this. It was a clothing store. He said, I've had a man to come up this week and say, I've stole some goods from you and I want to pay you back. I had another person that came and said, I worked for you, but I took some clothes that didn't belong to me and I stole and I want to pay them back. And he said, I've had two or three people come this week and tell me they want to pay me for things they've stolen out of my uh, store some time ago, some years ago. And the manager grinned and he said, the answer is, Billy Graham is in town. <laughs> Billy Graham is in town. Praise God. You need an influence. Maybe you don't have an influence like Billy Graham. Neither do I. But we have an influence where we are. I can reach somebody. And the people I reach, maybe Billy Graham couldn't reach. The person you reach, I couldn't reach. But there's somebody out there waiting on you. And so learn to shine for the Lord. Learn to find strength in God. And know that he who led Joshua into the promised land is leading you to claim the land, to claim the land for God. In Jesus' name, amen.